The third video in the Tools of Chemistry unit is on significant figures. We have two learning targets for this video. The first of which we want to be able to identify the number of significant figures in a measurement. As we have already discussed when learning how to measure, we know that significant figures or significant digits are all the known digits plus the one estimated digit in a measurement. What we need to be able to do is look at a measurement that we have not taken uh, and determine the number of sig significant figures or sig figs that are in that measurement. And there are some rules for doing this. The first rule, all non-zero numbers are always significant. So if you look at a measurement and there aren't any zeros, in this case the example 72.3 grams, we know that all three of those are significant. We know the first two would be known and that last digit would be the estimated one, so they're all significant, three sig figs. Here we have 9,238 kilometers. They're all non-zero numbers. They're all significant with the eight being the estimated digit for sig figs. Rule two. Zeros between other significant figures are always significant. So for example, if we have the measurement 605 milliliters, we know the six and the five are significant because they're not zero. That makes the middle zero, the zero in the middle significant, uh, because you can't have a non-sig fig between two sig figs. Uh, so there are three sig figs there. Even if you have two zeros together, like we have here, 20.07 meters cubed, we know the two and the seven are significant. That makes the two zeros in the middle significant. Here there are four sig figs. Next rule, final zeros to the right of the decimal are always significant. So here's what we mean by final zeros. Final zeros would be any zero appearing to the right of the number. And if it's after the decimal point, as you see here, 9.0 millimeters, it is significant. So there are two significant figures there. Here we have 30.0 moles. That last zero is a final zero to the right of the decimal. That makes, it, that makes it significant. So the zero in the middle is also significant because as we just learned from the previous rule, there can't be a non-sig fig between two other sig figs. So there are three sig figs there. Now recall that these zeros that we put on the end are there to show that we've estimated that digit. Uh, they're not there just because we have to or just because we choose to put them there uh, to make our answer look better. They're there because we estimated those, those zeros and that's what makes them significant. Placeholder zeros are never significant. There are two types of placeholder zeros, if you will. The first type would be zeros on the end of a number to the left of the decimal. So here we have 4,320 grams. That zero is there simply to hold the value of the measurement. Think about this. If we take the zero away, that is a very different measurement. 432 is obviously very different than 4,320. So the zero needs to be there to hold the value of the measurement, but it's not known or estimated, so it's not significant. Same thing if we had this, 19,000 kilometers. All three of these zeros are there to hold the value. They're not significant. So here would just be two sig figs. The other type of placeholder zero we'll see are leading zeros at the beginning of a number. So this 0, 0.00, these zeros are here just to hold the value. Uh, if we take those zeros out, uh, this, this measurement changes quite significantly. Now here, the two zeros on the end are significant because they're final zeros after the decimal, so that has four sig figs. Here, again, the leading zeros, never significant, uh, but the zero in the middle of the one and the five would be significant, so there are three sig figs. Last rule, counting numbers and defined constants are not measured and have infinite number of significant figures. For example, if I were to count the number of students in the classroom and I got to 22, that's an infinite number of sig figs. I did not measure the number of students. There are exactly 22 students in the classroom. Another example would be if we have a defined constant. We don't have to measure the number of feet in a mile. There are exactly 5,280 feet in one mile. Thus, it is infinite. We don't have to measure this value. 
Here, we just want to determine the number of significant figures in each. So I will give you the measurement or the value and we'll figure out how many sig figs are there. 19.08 centimeters, that would be four sig figs. Uh, the zero is between two non-zeros, that makes it significant, so all those digits are significant, so four sig figs. 0 0.00720 liters. The leading zeros, never significant. They are there as placeholders. So the seven and two are significant. The last zero is also significant because it's a final zero after the decimal. We're putting it there specifically to show we estimated that digit. So there are three sig figs there. 1,200 miles. The two zeros are here to hold the value of the measurement. They are placeholders. They were not known or estimated. So only the one and two are significant. So two sig figs. 18 pencils. That would be infinite. We would count the number of pencils. Just count them up. We don't have to measure it. There's no uncertainty there. There are exactly 18 pencils. 28 degrees Celsius. There are two sig figs there. They're both non-zeros. A point of confusion here for some students would be they look at that and they, they see a whole number so they automatically think infinite because we don't measure it uh, or yeah because we don't measure it. but consider this we can't count the temperature it has to be measured uh, so that is two sig figs point zero 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 three nine two seconds the leading zeros never significant they're there as placeholders if we would take those zeros out it would majorly change the value of the measurement so here are just three sig figs the three the nine and the two six hundred milliliters as that's written just one sig fig. The two zeros are there as placeholders. But consider this. What if we were to measure a volume, say, of a liquid, and it was 600 milliliters, but it actually should be more than one sig fig? How would we write that? Well, one way to do it is to put a decimal point at the end. This shows specifically that that last zero is estimated. So if the last zero is estimated, that means the middle zero is known. So that would be three sig figs. A question you might have would be, well, what if we didn't estimate the last zero, but what if we estimated the middle zero uh, in the tens place? But I can't put a decimal point after the middle zero because that would change it to 60.0, and that's not what that would not be the correct measurement. Well, another thing you can do is you can put a line over the digit. So if you see something like this where there's a line over a digit, that means that digit was estimated. So here we estimated the middle zero. Uh, that makes this two sig figs, the six and that middle zero. The last zero in this case would be uh, just a placeholder, so not significant. Lastly, one inch equals 12 feet. Whoa, that is written wrong, obviously. That should be 12 inches equals one foot. Uh, if it were written like that, uh, that would be infinite number of sig figs. Infinite number of sig figs because we don't have to measure the number of inches in a foot. Uh, that is a that is an exact value. Same thing here. Uh, I give you the measurements. You need to determine the number of sig figs. Pause the video, try them all yourself, and then and then see how you did. Here are the answers to each of these. Uh, just quickly going through the reasoning. A two sig figs. Those two zeros there are placeholders, not significant. B, notice it's the same value, 1900 degrees Fahrenheit, but now the .00 on the end shows we've estimated all the way to the uh, hundredths place. That makes all of these zeros in between significant. So that, that would have six sig figs. C, the leading zeros, never significant. So that means we have just the two and the five, so two sig figs. D, we have the same measurement again, but now we have a zero on the end. The leading zeros are still not significant. Uh, only that final zero after the decimal is, so that's three sig figs. E, all non-zeros, so that would be all, all significant, so five sig figs. F, three sig figs. The middle zero between the three and the seven is significant because it's between two non-zeros. The last zero, not significant. It's a placeholder. It's there to hold the value of the measurement, so three sig figs. G, 27 students, infinite. We wouldn't measure the number of students. We would simply count. It's an exact number. H, the leading zeros, never significant. So those zeros at the beginning, not significant. The zero between the five and the nine is significant because it's between two sig figs. 
The last zero is also significant because it's a final zero after the decimal. We're putting it there specifically to show that we estimated to that digit, so five sig figs. The last one here, also five sig figs. Notice the decimal point at the end, that's there to show that we actually estimated that last zero. The, the zeros between the two and the four also have to be significant because they're between two non-zeros. So all those digits are significant, so five sig figs. So we can identify the number of sig figs in a measurement by following those rules. Now what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to take these measurements and report answers and calculations to the proper number of significant figures. There are two basic sets of rules that we follow when dealing with sig figs in calculations. The first rule deals whenever we add or subtract. It's the same rule. The rule is this. The precision of the answer should match the precision of the least precise measurement. And in this case, what we mean by precision is not what we learned in the last video where we're talking about consistency of measurements. The, the term precision can also refer to sig figs, and I'll show you some examples here so you know what we mean. In other words, we're going to look at decimal places. So here's an example. Let's say we have this calculation, 137 centimeters plus 24.63 centimeters. You plug this in your calculator, and it's going to tell you an answer, but you're going to find that the calculator is going to lie. In order to do this, what you want to do, especially when you're first learning about these sig figs, write the question just like you learned how to do it when you were in elementary and you learned to do the, the addition without a calculator. Line the decimal point up. So notice I have the ones place lined up, the tens place, the hundreds, and then uh, if I would have had tens and hundreds here in the first measurement, they'd be lined up as well. Your calculator is going to tell you 161.63 centimeters. But here's the thing. It makes no sense for us to report this as our answer if this first measurement, 137 centimeters, only goes to the ones place. Recall whenever we made this measurement, we estimated that last digit. So we estimated the seven in the ones place. It makes no sense for us to keep a measurement that goes all the way to the hundreds if we estimated the ones place in this measurement. In other words, what we're saying is the answer to a calculation can never be any better than the worst measurement in the calculation. It's the old phrase, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Same thing applies here. So here's what we do. We look at the least precise measurement. In this case, it's the 137 because there's only a sig fig in the ones place, whereas in the second measurement it goes to the hundreds place. We are then going to round our answer to the ones place. Uh, the least precise measurement, 137 centimeters, has its last sig fig in the ones place. The answer must be reported to the ones place. So we're going to round for sig figs, and this is the notation I like to use. I draw an arrow and put SF over the top of it to show that I'm rounding for si significant figures. And then I'm going to round my answer to the nearest ones place in this case. Well, so what I do, I, look at, I find the ones place, I go to the next digit, and I see it's bigger than 5, so I round up to 162 centimeters. That's the answer. It's not we're just rounding uh, to estimate. It's not an estimated answer. It is the answer to the calculation. There is no way the answer to the calculation can be any better than that because one of the measurements that we use for the calculation was only that good. Here's another example. 32.5 seconds minus 18.67 seconds. Again, write the uh, equation out just like you would in elementary school, line up the decimal points, line up all the decimal places, hundredths, tenths, ones, tens, etc. Your calculator is going to tell you 13.83 seconds. However, notice the first measurement only goes to the tenths place. That's the last sig fig. So I can only report an answer to the tenths place. I can't go anywhere past that. So I'm I am going to round, so I'm going to find my tenths place. I look to the next digit. It's less than 5, so I will round down. So my reported answer is 13.8 seconds. Again, it's not just that we're giving an estimated answer. Don't think of it as, well, that's not the exact answer. That There's no such thing. Remember, there are no exact measurements. Our measurements only allow us to report an answer to the tenths place. That's the best we can do. Another example. Here we have three digits, but notice they're all being added. So it's the same rule. Just because there's three digits doesn't mean the rule changes. 
So I'm going to write out my equation here. I'm going to line up all the decimal places. Ask yourself, what is the least precise measurement here? What decimal place is, the, is in the least precise for the sig figs? Well, the answer in this case is actually the tens place. Notice this first measurement, 1,450 liters, that zero is not significant. It's a placeholder. So the last sig fig in this first measurement is in the tens place, meaning I need to round my answer to the tens place. This is often a point of confusion when, whenever we have an addition like this when there's a zero as a placeholder. So I'm going to round to the, to the tens place. My tens place, here's my tens place. I look to the next digit. In this case, it's a two, so I round down. So my answer is 1,690 liters. Notice we can't just drop that zero. We can't just not put something in the ones place. Even though that zero is not a sig fig, it has to be there to hold the value of the answer. Obviously, 169 liters is very different than 1,690 liters. So we do need a zero there as a placeholder. Now let's look at the rule for multiplication division. This is a different rule, and in a lot of ways, I think it's easier to follow. In multiplication division, the answer must contain the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the fewest number of sig figs. In other words, we just have to count sig figs. We don't have to worry about decimal places. Uh, that's not a concern here. Just count the number of sig figs, and then we round so that our answer has that fewest number of sig figs. So here are some examples. If we take 137 centimeters times 24.63 centimeters, our calculator will tell us this, 3,374.31, and that would be centimeters squared because it's centimeters times centimeters. However, our measurements, 137 centimeters is three sig figs. 24.63 centimeters, four sig figs. Our answer has to contain the fewest number of sig figs. In this case, that's three. That's the fewest number of sig figs of any of the measurements. Now the question becomes, where do I round? Here's what we do. We're going to begin counting from the first non-zero digit at the left. So I start counting from the left. One, two, three. My third sig fig in this case is going to be in the tens place. That is where we round. So we look to the next digit. It's less than five. So we round down. So our answer is 3,370 centimeters squared. Again, notice just like in the last example of the addition subtraction, we still need a zero in the ones place as a placeholder. We can't just drop that, that place because that would change the value of the answer. Another example. This time division, still the same rule. 4.5 meters divided by 3.266 seconds. Your calculator is going to tell you 1.3778 meters per second. Count the sig figs. Two sig figs in 4.5 meters, four sig figs in 3.266 seconds. Our answer is going to contain two sig figs. That's the fewest number. So again, I start counting from the left, the first non-zero, one, Two. So here in this, in this case, I'm going to round uh, to the tenths place. I look to the next digit. In this case, it's bigger than five. So I will round up. So my answer is 1.4 meters per second. Another example, 2.5 meters times 5.3 meters. Calculator is going to tell you 13.25 meters squared. Both of these measurements have two sig figs in them. So I will keep two sig figs in my answer, as that is the fewest number. In this case, that second sig fig is in the ones place. So I start counting from the left, one, two, two sig figs. I look to the next digit. In this case, it's less than five. So I will round down 13 meters squared. Notice in this example, even though both of our measurements go to the tenths place, I don't get to keep an answer to the tenths place. Because in multiplication division, it's about number of significant figures, not the decimal places. That is the difference between the addition, subtraction, and the multiplication division. Here are just several practice problems. Uh, I'll put the calculation or the, the, the problem up. Pause the video. Try it yourself. Uh, see if you get the same answer I do. First one, we have addition. So remember, addition and subtraction is about the decimal places not the number of sig figs. Here, your calculator will tell you 46.29 meters. 
The first measurement, though, only goes to the tenths place. So I have to round to the tenths place. That would round to 46.3 meters. B, we have division. So remember, that's number of sig figs. Count the sig figs so you know how many to keep. Your calculator will tell you 154.66 miles per hour. The first measurement here has three sig figs, 408 miles. The second one is four. The fewest number of that is three, so I get to keep three sig figs. So I start counting from the left, one, two, three. I'm going to round to the ones place. I look to the next digit. It's bigger than five, so I round up 155 miles per hour. Next one, subtraction, 3.587 grams minus 0 0.097 grams. Here, your calculator is going to tell you 3.49 grams. However, notice both of these measurements have a sig fig to the thousandths place, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Both of them go to the thousandths place, meaning my answer needs to go to the thousandths place. So in this case, I need to add a zero. This doesn't happen too often, but here is a case where it does. You actually have to add a digit. We're not rounding to take any, way, any away. We need a sig fig in that thousandths place. Next one, 19.6 kilometers times 3.26 kilometers divided by 0 0.025 seconds. Here's the first time we've seen this example where we have two different operations. Even though multiplication and division are obviously different operations, it's the same rule. Uh, we're looking at number of sig figs. When you plug this in your calculator, plug it all in at once. Do not, for example, uh, get an answer to the multiplication and then do the division. Just plug it all in at once. The reason is, is if you uh, do the initial calculation, you might be tempted to round that answer and then do the next calculation and round that answer. You can only round once. Uh, the reason you can only round once is if you round more than once, that might lead to rounding error, meaning not that you rounded wrong, but by rounding the first time and then get doing the next calculation, you, you'll get a different answer sometimes than you should if you round more than once. That's what we mean by a rounding error. So in this case, you plug it all into your calculator. Your calculator is going to tell you 2,555.84, in this case, kilometers squared, because it's kilometers times kilometers per second. Now, we can only keep two sig figs. Uh, notice the first measurement is three sig figs, the second one's three sig figs, the third one though is only two sig figs. Those leading zeros are not significant. So we're going to start counting from the left, one, two. I need to round to the hundreds place in this case. I look to the next digit, it's, going to, it's five, so I'm going to round up. So 2,600 kilometers squared per second. Last one, 1,387 meters plus 22,970 meters. Calculator is going to tell you 24,357 meters. Notice in the second measurement here, that zero is not significant. It's the last sig fig is in the tens place, so I need to round my answer to the tens place. So I find the tens place, I go to the next digit, it's bigger than five, so I round up. So my answer is 24,360 meters. Again, notice that zero there has to be there as a placeholder. I can't just drop it. So the learning targets we hit up here, we need to identify the number of sig figs in a measurement. We, we looked at the rules for that. And then the mathematical calculations, the two sets of rules, addition, subtraction, we're looking at uh, decimal places, the precision of the measurements. In multiplication division, we're simply counting sig figs. Now, one more thing to consider here that's not really a learning target, but we do need to be able to do it correctly, rounding. And this is something you've been doing since elementary school, so I know we're pretty familiar with it, but just to review, and actually there is one thing that, that you're going to learn here that you have never seen in the past. So to round, we need to determine the decimal place to be rounded to based on the calculation. Addition, subtraction, or multiplication, division. Know what your rule is, so find that right place to round to. Then we look at the following digit. If the following digit is greater than 5, we round up. So that's nothing new. You've always done that. If the following digit is less than 5, we round down. Again, nothing new. That's what you've always done. If the following digit is 5, you need to look at the remaining digits after that. So this is something a little different. If there are any non-zero digits following the 5 that, 
that, that you're looking to for rounding, you round up just like you always have in the past. However, if there are no non-zero digits following the five, you round so the rounded digit is even. And here are the examples that we understand this. So here in this, in this measurement, we have to round to the hundreds place. We look to the next digit, it is five. So we have to look to the rest of the digits. I see a one, that's not a zero. Any non-zeros after the five tells me we're gonna round up. So in this case, we round to 3,300. Why? Well, that's because the reason is, is the non-zeros make it so that this number, 32 or 3,251, is closer to 3,300 than it is to 3,200. That's why we round it to 3,300. The next example, 3.42500, we're rounding in this case to the hundredths place. The next digit's five, so we have to look at the rest of the digits. All I see are zeros. So in other words, this number is exactly halfway between the two possibilities, 3.42 and 3.43. The rule tells us we are going to round so that the digit we round is even. So my possibilities are either 3.42 or 3.43. Two is the even option. So my answer is rounded to 3.42. The reason we do this is because this number is exactly halfway between the two possibilities, we're just going to round to it's even so that if we did this over and over and over and over and over again, eventually we would round up the same number of times we would round down. If, it, if you did it over and over and over, the statistics would work so that it happened the same number of times.